Hello everyone out there. I am Susan Gerbeck. It is bright and early for me in Salinas, California on Tuesday, the 25th of August here in 2020, year of our Lord. <laughs> my Lord. Oh my Lord. That's why I say that because it's like every day it's, oh my Lord. Yes. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Facebook Live. Welcome to uh, uh, About Time Presents in Conversation. And also you will see this on YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. And I will put a link to our YouTube channel. Please subscribe. I need three more <laughs> subscribers so I can have the extra <laughs> bells and whistles. I cannot believe I can't. I, I, I have not hit 100 subscribers yet. It's just an insane world out there. Oh, and I forgot what I was doing. Okay, here we go. So I can see um, comments here on Facebook. That's why I'm looking off to my right hand, my right hand side. <laughs> I will be able to see if you guys have comments for our guest today. And today we have a really special guest. This is Annika Harrison. And Annika is a, oh my goodness, you joined GSOW, the Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia project a while back. I forgot to look and see how long it was. So I will keep talking at the top. 17. <laughs> 2017? Yes. <laughs> I... And you joined us because you found, well, anyway, so Annika joined the GSOW project and because of um, the way the world works, she has also gotten involved in a lot of other really exciting things that she's going to tell us about. One of them is the ESP, the real ESP. The experience. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The real ESP experience. So that is Annika. So Annika is... Um, Aha, I found it. Uh, you learned about the GSOW project from listening to me do a lecture, a talk with um, Pontes, Jelena, and uh, Andras on the European Skeptic Podcast. That's what the real ESP experience is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she, I had mentioned that we had almost no editors in German. And she's like, what? <laughs> no, we can't have that. So she joined the GSOW project in, in 2017, about the time that you were starting to become a teacher. You were just going through the program, I believe, right? Yep. <laughs> okay, so tell everybody who you are. Annika Harrison, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm Annika Harrison. <laughs> um, I'm 30 years old. <laughs> I joined, as Susan already said, in uh, 2017. Um Pretty much a few months after that, I went to Watch Law for the European Skeptics Congress, where I also met Susan and Andras and Jelena and Pontus and Claire Klingenberg and a lot of other cool people. <laughs> and I should also say that um, I entered the skeptic movement because of my now husband, then boyfriend. <laughs> so um, I was probably skeptic my whole life, but I never knew there was a name for it. <laughs> and yeah. Um, you live over in Germany? Yeah, I live in Germany, close to Cologne. Uh, I work as a teacher now, um, also close to Cologne, <laughs> but in another direction. <laughs> um, what can I say? Yeah, I think after after um, joining GSOW, I pretty much uh, hit a good spot. <laughs> and um, yeah, I got involved with the Skeptical Inquirer, thanks to Susan. <laughs> and um, I got involved with the German Skeptical Movement. I wrote a few um, things for the German Skeptica magazine. And yeah, I would say the rest is history. And um, last month I joined the ESP. Uh, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> yeah, this has just been a whirlwind for you. And it's been exciting to watch because you came along Scotty, your now husband, had been the one who got you involved in the skeptic world. And you were like, well, I guess I could do this. And so you just started one step and then the next step. And, and there are Cologne skeptics aren't that and busy. You know, they're not really, well, I'm going to join them. And I think I'll go to the conference. And then I told her, well, now that you're a GSOW editor, you just walk up to whoever you want at the conference. Yeah, exactly. Go, I'm a GSOW editor. So back off. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, need this, thing was... this, this, and this done. And I want you to do that. <laughs> so funny. And the funny thing was in the in the beginning I actually like I was so shy with the Cologne skeptics that I never talked to anybody. So of course I thought they weren't interested in me. <laughs> <laughs> so 
a like typical teenage thing, although I wasn't a teenager back then. But um, yeah, the moment I started to be like, hey, I'm Annika, I, I do this, I do that. They were like super happy to see me and um, <laughs> already found like great friends with the Cologne skeptics now. So <laughs> Yeah. Did you skeptics in the pub? Tell us about what's going on over there. Now, that how how far away is Cologne from other centers so that for people who aren't who are geographically um, challenged like myself? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, Cologne is in the let me north east southwest in the west of Germany, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's like one of the four biggest city or like the, the best known cities. Um, others would be Munich, Berlin, or Hamburg. And it's pretty much, um, it's pretty much if you, if you would like draw a zone, it would be in the middle between Berlin and Munich, but it's not in the middle from this on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like from, from, um, North to South, it would be in the middle, mm -hmm. but from East to West, it's more in the Western part. Okay. Uh, yeah, apart from that, like it's pretty close to the Netherlands, not super close, but, oh. um, like we, my, my federal country borders to the Netherlands. So, <laughs> and Very to um, Belgium. <laughs> and so we went to, um, I've actually met you several times uh, because when, when um, Mark Edward and I were over in Germany for the conference you just mentioned, um, you had, you were a brand new GSW editor. I don't even think yeah. you finished training. And uh, one of the things Andras and Mark Edward and I and um, Scotty and um, we were we were going through, we were going to do some lectures in Germany. And you said, hey, why don't you come hang out with us in Frankfurt? Let's go to the Natural History Museum. Yes. So we're like, I'm like, well, that sounds great to me. I have no idea how close one thing is to another. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, let's go. So we, went, we met up with you and Scotty at the Frankfurt um, uh, Natural History yeah, Museum and we yeah. went through that. That was really interesting. I'm looking at pictures right now. It was a lot of fun to be able to go through there. We saw a lot of really great things. They had the tech trans, yes. as Rex out in the front. Uh, Andres lectured a bit for us. <laughs> yeah, a lot. it had a wonderful, wonderful uh, hominid um, uh, yes. evolution of, of humans area oh yeah yeah i'm looking at it right now it was an incredible place and then we went and had like tea or coffee or whatever with, yeah um, and we couldn't home, pay by card <laughs> i don't think you went with us did you no no we, we had to fly to australia <laughs> that's right you came to fly to australia <laughs> Yeah. You were in Frankfurt just to just to go to the airport, right? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we were like, oh, we were like at the same time, so why don't we catch up? <laughs> it was fun. We had lunch and we had a really good time and it was it was nice seeing you there as well as in um in Work Workla, Poland <clears throat> the conference. <Yeah. laughs> um I wanted to mention that you do write for a skip skip skeptiker. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a it's a really slick magazine. I've received some from Annika, and I picked some up when I was in Germany. This is by <clears throat> G W U P. Yeah, say? yeah. The G W U P um, group over there, and it has a full time um, Martin. I think is his name. He has a full time. Uh, yeah, Martin is the full timer for the whole. Um, right, and we went to, his, we went to their office there yeah. and we got to go check it out they have a library all german um skeptical articles skeptical books skeptical stuff but anyway so these are some really um really interesting <clears throat> magazines if you speak german and if you don't you can just look at the pretty pictures like i do <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the chief um like the editor is inge Husken, who's also like a pretty good friend of mine now so now yeah, yeah she's um She's the editor and Martin Mana is like the, um, yeah, of the whole club, of the whole um, group, I would say. He's the whole manager. <laughs> manager, yeah. So it's a very yeah. slick looking magazine. I would I would recommend that you get, if not the print, you get the uh, online version if you don't have, yeah. um, uh, but if you speak German. And here's a, here's a cartoon that's got me in it, right down here at the bottom. Yes. <laughs> so cool. 
and um you know it's just it's just a beautiful looking magazine they're so so we're starting to lose our magazines the print and um, i personally love things in print and it just feels good you can sit down yeah. and look at it in a chair without having to have your phone your yeah. laptop next to you and um it's like a moment in time frozen instead of um, a computer screen which of course we're going to have to have someday yeah. but these, this just got some great stuff in here and there is a conference that they have um, i guess it's not going to be i don't know or they're going to probably try to do it this next year and um, that's right next year yeah <laughs> funny enough, the one that you're holding up there was the one i went to that was my first scapcon that was the one where i was like i'm going to scapcon do you want me to do any photos or interviews <laughs> i said go up to the professor whoever looks like the professional photographer of the group uh, yeah, tell exactly. them who you yeah, are and say, one. <laughs> i need pictures from these people to be yes. uploaded to wikimedia <laughs> and do it with a very confident <laughs> And they'll probably say, sure, I'd love to use my pictures on Wikipedia. That and they did. <laughs> they did, yeah. And then yeah. from there, then you were able to get more uh, art, uh, information. So yeah, it's like once you have your foot in, it, it can lead to more things. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's definitely how I say is that when people ask me, how do I get involved with the skeptic community? I'm nobody. Nobody knows who I am. I'd like to be more active and things like that. The advice I always give is, show up yeah show up let them know you're there even if you don't have any expertise that you're that you're aware of is being um important just showing up yeah. and following through on things say oh i'll do that and then do it and yeah. follow up and make sure it's done correctly ask questions i mean and show your face like that's also important yeah going and letting them know hey i'm here i'd like to help i really don't know what skills you need sometimes it's just organizational skills or um you know writing letters or i mean it could be a lot of different things just introducing yourself to people and letting them helping other yeah. people feel welcome and, and to the group and there's so many things that can be done it's Definitely. it's incredible i mean i have my degree is not in science well it's social and behavioral science but it's not a i'm more of a social historian But I, it's a BA. I've never used it for anything. <laughs> I don't even have it on my wall. <laughs> so I'm I'm a manager, and that's that's my skill. It's nothing in science. That's, that's well, all. me neither. Like I studied English and history, so um, like <laughs> not really. Like if I would have gone into linguistics from English, you could maybe call it science. Or if I would have gone from like history to I don't know other out out part other parts of that I, like you could maybe also call it science but because i'm a teacher like it's also not really science what i do <laughs> well what <laughs> what do you teach what grades do you teach or um, the english school, what a, ages do you teach i should say um yeah i teach at a comprehensive school so i teach ages 10 to 20 roughly 10 to so it's grade 10 to 5 to 13. <laughs> <clears throat> The basics, I mean, English, German. Yeah, like I, I only teach two subjects. So I teach English and I teach history. What kind of history do you teach? Uh, that's different. Um, in the sixth grade, we usually start with uh, the Stone Age and like what is history at, uh, anyways. And uh, I'll just move this mirror. Wait a sec. I didn't realize you taught history, I don't think, because I <laughs> love history. Yeah, me too. I'm such a nerd in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what else? Like you start with the Stone Age, then you jump to the Egyptians, like ancient Egyptians, of course. Um, Greeks, Romans, then you jump to the Middle Ages. <laughs> so it sounds like um, world history. Yeah, that's pretty much like we, we don't do like European history. Well, it's a bit Eurocentric, but... Um, well, it is actually European history, just to face it, but <laughs> well, we, <laughs> like we, we also have like um, uh, like Colum Columbus in there or um, like we have outer parts of, of uh, <laughs> European history, like indirect human, uh, European history in there, but it's pretty much European history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so now you've been all over have you been traveling all over the world i mean you spend quite a bit of time in uh australia right yeah like i i didn't travel like around that much so 
Like I was pretty much around Europe and in Australia so far in my life. <laughs> But um, yeah, I was in um, Australia in 17 and last Christmas. <laughs> Scotty, your husband is from Melbourne? Uh, from Armidale, which is um, pretty much between Brisbane and Sydney Brisbane. in New South Wales. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. He's a nice guy too. He oh, he's great. <laughs> he likes Scotty too. He's, he's a good guy. Yeah. And it's nice <laughs> to see the little Australian influence in there too. Cool. You haven't been yeah, to America, right? Yeah, we recently discovered that, that my German accent is a bit uh, lower now. And <laughs> I actually like sometimes sound like almost Australian. So I don't know. Really? Because I talk to him a lot. <laughs> is he picking up the German accent? Uh, not really. <laughs> and you met him there in Germany, right? Because he was going yeah. to school. Yeah. We, we, uh, we met each other in the city of Siegen <laughs> in Germany. So like, you don't have to know that. It's not a huge uh, city. <laughs> um, the only thing that it can be... Okay, I don't want to insult Siegen people. So I won't <laughs> say it's the only thing they're, they're not... They're not it's notable about it, but... They had a huge mine under their city where the um, where they the Nazis hid um, art. So oh. <laughs> if you watched, um, I don't remember what this movie was called, but it was a movie about like people like American actually searching for Nazi art that was hidden, and they um, they mentioned Siegen in there. So. <laughs> But you don't have to know it, definitely. <laughs> was it well-built tunnels that are, you know, like, or was it just like digging it out and throwing them in, you know, or, or was it nice um, tunnels that preserved the <laughs> art nicely and kept them from being ravaged well, with mice I and stuff? I think it was like an, if I remember, like, Siegen has a lot of iron ore, so I imagine it was dryish, <laughs> but... um Yeah, apart from that, I can't really tell you more about that because, yeah. <laughs> this is history, girl. You're supposed to know all your history. <clears throat> uh, this is too young for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm we'll, in the Middle Ages. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to move over to GSNW because I thought it was really kind of fun. You started GSNW in 2017. You've been so busy doing other things, which is fine. Because <laughs> for those people who do not know, uh, which is probably most people, The goal of my mission, my personal mission for starting the About Time Project and the GSOW pro Project is not to rewrite all Wikipedia pages concerning science and scientific skepticism and the paranormal in all languages. That is not <laughs> my goal. My goal is to find people like Annika who have uh, the desire to want to do other things, to be... Um, to have projects in mind, who, who want to meet other like-minded people and to use that, oh, I don't know if I can use the word synergy, but that's kind of one of those dated <laughs> words that everybody used to use, but where you kind of feed off each other, you get to know other people. And I think we self-motivate ourselves when somebody yeah. does something and they talk about it and somebody else, oh, I can help with that. And then they help with that and so on. And the Wikipedia project obviously is, is extremely important But um, it's not it's not just the Wikipedia project. I mean, when I in introduced Andras to um, Pontes and they started the ESP podcast, I mean, it wasn't because I introduced them, but they, but they <laughs> meet each other at, at QED. But they and, call you the mom of their podcast for a yeah, reason. So. <laughs> the, mom, the evil stepmother of the, of the podcast. They introduced them. They walked up to me separately like at the same conference and like I just got out of the taxi and here comes Andras. I'm one of your editors in Hungarian. Nice to meet you. And here's Pontus. Hi, I'm Pontus. I've seen you on Facebook. I'd like to meet you. I'm like, let's all go to McDonald's and solve all the world's problems because I just got out of the taxi and we sat down and we talked and it was great. And I have a picture of it to prove it. And uh, we didn't solve it. I all think that problems. should totally be like when you guys catch up. You should totally awesome. take a video, like a fake video of that, how that happened. I like <laughs> Such a historical moment. And then they met Jelena there too. Uh, yeah. at the conference. She was one of my editors in, in Russian. And she yeah. came over, hi, I'm Jelena. And I'm like, oh, have a seat. Let's, let's hang out. And so 
we just kind of hung out together and that's how they got to know each other and, and eventually they started the european skeptic podcast yeah the rest but, is history <laughs> the rest is well we're still making it but yeah. so, that, that, so i know and has always said oh i feel really bad that i've not been doing more with the wikipedia project and i said but what you're doing with the european skeptic podcast is so important and let me let me glow on that for a moment annika that um so this is a podcast for people out there who aren't listening, who haven't listened to it before. How many shows? Two? Uh, we 200? did 237 yesterday. That's <laughs> amazing. So, so it will come out on Thursday. The so sometimes they do interviews and sometimes they do news of the what's going on in Europe or things that are sort of hit European. It's all done in English, but... Uh, people represent different countries. Uh, Jelena was from, uh, she spoke Russian, but she is from Lithuania. Lithuania. Yeah, right? or Latvia. I'm sorry, Latvia, I'm so Latvia, bad. Latvia, Latvia. I'm so bad. <laughs> no, no, it was Latvia. It's hard no, I remember. And then Andras is from the Hungarian skeptics. <clears throat> and then uh, Pontus is from the um, uh, Swedish, Swedish skeptics. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes they have Brian Agel from. Glasgow skeptics on there. I spoke to <laughs> Glasgow skeptics. <laughs> I think Brian is so funny. And then, so they were around for a couple of years. No, it's been longer than that. Gosh, time just. They will have the fifth year anniversary. Fifth anniversary. <laughs> yeah. So the format of the show is kind of. I don't know if you would say it's a magazine kind of. No, it's not a magazine kind of show like the Skeptic Zone. It's more where they do interviews, they have segments like where they do a quote, um, a, a, something from history. They, uh, Pontus usually talks about the Pope with a segment <laughs> called uh, Pontus Popes the Pope. Yes. <laughs> I learned a lot about Pope, uh, what's going on with the Popes. I had no idea. Yeah. But they it's talk so about the news. Ridiculous yeah, there's so much of... interesting stuff going on with yeah. the Pope. And so, so the show is, is weekly, right? And so um, it's, it's fascinating because what, one of the things they do is they have a events tab and it takes, you can, you can, if you're going to be in Europe or you live in Europe or in the before times, in the times before when we could travel freely and meet with people in, in yeah, person. Pre-COVID. <laughs> Pre-COVID, yeah. Before, times you remember that? Um, <laughs> you could go to conferences, you could go to um skeptics in the pub and so on and so they would keep they have this this event page that has like what's going on across europe and i i always suggest it for people who are might be going who are from the united states or australia and going to europe for work or vacation and maybe they could try to see if they can time it so they can go hang out at one of the one of the other events that's happening yeah I think it's, it's 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 the you know a nice way of getting everybody together and uh, knowing what's going on but anyway, so the podcast, to me, what I find is really interesting is that is hearing the different voices that are not just the typical things I'm used to, people with American accents. Yeah. And um, I, I love seeing the diversity and the culture and whenever they bring elements of wherever they're from into it, I think that's great. And I love that they interview people who are not the typical people that everybody seems to interview um, in, the, in the American podcast. And so I, it's just a, there's a huge diverse group of talent in Europe. And a lot of the work they're doing isn't in English. So a lot of people aren't really familiar with it. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, it's so cool because it just gives um, like people from Europe a door so to say to the world yeah i think it's their logo isn't it <laughs> yeah so, yeah yeah a bridge <clears throat> skeptics yeah and i think it's yeah. i think it's important because there's not only a lot of talent and skill but there's a lot of history um i know leon uh Kortowig, who's part of the gsw project and writes mostly in english and, and um and uh dutch dutch yeah sorry yeah another mm -hmm. And he has written a lot of the, well, actually he writes in so many languages we don't even know. He's yeah, he's like the Portuguese, editor. Spanish, if you would ever German. want to name yeah. one editor, then he's like the machine. He, he, I don't know <laughs> what it is. He writes in everything. So <clears throat> he um, he's written a lot of the skeptic pages for the different 
organizations that are yeah. in Germany. And it was real interesting to see how old some of these, these organizations date back. You know, the 1940s, I believe, is the oldest one. Yeah, um, I think even like in the Netherlands, there's even one that's even older. I think the... I think they have the oldest group. Yeah, I think there was like Verenigingen gegen de Quacksalverei or something like that. Something about quacks and yeah, <laughs> yeah something like that. They presented a newsletter and yeah. um, they've been in publication for a long time. And I think a bunch had to stop because of, several had to stop because of World War II. Yeah. But there's, like I said, there's a rich history. And if you read, if you, like, if you were to read through one of these skeptics, Skeptica. How do you say it? Skeptica? Skeptica. <laughs> Skeptica. If you were to read through one of these, it, it's like almost like reading one of the Skeptical Inquirer magazines. Um, you know, the, the topics in here and the history and the articles of testing, dowsing, homeopathy, yeah. UFOs, cryptozoology. It, it, it's, it's a really interesting look at what's hap what's uh, popular in different countries yeah <clears throat> and speaking of homeopathy i just wanted to show you um the wristbands that i have uh, that are um they look like this <laughs> and i'll just read out what it says in english um yeah, but they, they're german so this is like homeopathy is no let me just look is no natural remedy and then hashtag team lobby so this is a uh Oh, no. Like the global eye are the sugar pills, uh -huh. and it's a pun. It's like um, global eye and apocalypse, so they call it global eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got like I've got even like two more. Um, this says I, I'd rather dance than take in D twenty. D twenty is like one of the one of the dosages, and this one just says homeopathy doesn't work beyond placebo effect. So. so so what I understand, what, and I didn't understand this well before I went to Germany, <laughs> homeopathy is a huge deal in Germany. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like people get death threats and things like that for, yeah. for uh, speaking out about homeopathy. In America, it's like a, eh, it's kind of like the flat earth. I, I'm sure people take it here, but it's not like a huge, oh my gosh, you aren't yeah. taking homeopathy. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you? It's, it's. It's a, it's still on our shelves. We're trying to get it off our shelves. But tell me about homeopathy in Germany. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I mean, the founder or like the inventor or whatever you want to call it of homeopathy is from or was from Germany, um, Samuel Hahnemann. And um, I think that's maybe why it has such deep roots here. Um, and yeah, it's it's a huge thing. Like it's for example, normally I wear glasses and my glasses are not covered by insurance although they are proven to work of course homeopathy on the other hand is covered by the insurance so really <laughs> yeah your glasses are not yeah but homeopathy is yes <laughs> <laughs> and um right. so yeah you can see how how deep homeopathy pretty much is in and in, deeply entrenched in in the system and um, it can be devastating and very harmful because if you like, okay, if you have a little, um, if you have a cold, then if you take homeopathy, it will be gone after seven days. And if you don't take homeopathy, it will be gone after a week. So it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have to confess, I stole this joke from a telegram. So <laughs> it wasn't my really That's very funny. <laughs> But it's, um, yeah, if, if you have like, I don't know, anxiety attacks or cancer or like something where you definitely shouldn't take sugar pills or Smarties or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, like that's why I like to compare it to because yeah, it's definitely sense. like it is sugar pills. So, um, and um, yeah, it can be devastating. It can be very harmful. And it's also costing a lot of money for like if you. Um, yeah, if you spend money for it, you'd much rather get something that works and that is not pretty much water or sugar. I'm going to show, I'm going to yeah. show something really quick here on the screen. Let me share screen. Mm -hmm. This is from the, the offices at GW Upe. And this is some homeopathy they had. And this is the Berlin Wall. Oh, yeah. Let's just have a bit of the Berlin Wall. In it. Yeah, and, and then we, you can... 
it treats imagine a, like what what it helps against it's just it, like it what? treats a, um claustroph claustrophobia oh because of the wall yeah okay <laughs> Here's a picture of Mark Edward and uh, Martin, and they're looking at this. Mark could not believe it. He's like, what? <laughs> what? You got what there? The Berlin Wall? Uh, he's dying to get some Berlin Wall. Yeah, it's uh, wonderful. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you wouldn't believe what, like, it, it's it's so, it's it can be so harmful because, like, um, like the best thing that happen, can happen to you is that it doesn't work that is just sugar <laughs> yeah but some of them also don't have to have to declare the dosages i don't know how it is in germany but i know in some countries that just so they can, can or there can also be something in there that does still work um and they can they will then claim it like it's natural remedy or something but in case it will like be a poison or something so um yeah it can be it can be very harmful and um that's pretty much the reason why a lot of uh, German <clears throat> doctors and other interested people got together and formed uh, founded the information network homeopathy yeah tell us about that that's really interesting mm -hmm. um yeah as I said a few medical doctors um a few I think I don't know what all of them like of what the jobs are but most of them were already active and they said like hey why don't we just build a network out of that? <laughs> Because we're all active, but we're all like doing our own, our own Don Quixote <laughs> fighting against windmills uh, thing, but on our own. So um, yeah, they got together. And um, also like, I think if I remember correctly, Edzard Ernst is also a member of, of that. And um, they wrote a um, declaration, I would co translate it, <clears throat> and um, I, I think that the figurehead of, of the whole thing was Natalie Grumps for, for the last few years. She um, decided to step back this year. And now um, Jutta Hübner is, um, is the, like the poster child, if you want to call it, or like leader. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and yeah, there are a lot of very active um, people in there. I could maybe mention uh, Susanne and Norbert Aus. They're, doing, they're um, very active. They've also been to the last ESC in uh, Rent. Um, mm -hmm. They talked about the information network homeopathy there. Norbert Aus also has been on the European Skeptics podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, Udo Endrescheid is somebody I could also mention. He's very active behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, Natalie Grams, of course. But that there are a lot more people doing great work. I just can't remember all of them. Yeah, I didn't mean they're to all the, wonderful people. The, come on now, you better know all these things. I should probably <laughs> do more. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> Natalie Grams is wonderful. amazing. She is so she's so patient and yeah. such an interesting communicator. I mean, she's good at communicating. When when we were on this tour that we met you on as yeah. well, um, we went to Heidelberg. Mm -hmm. And there is a museum of in the castle or near it. No, in the castle, there's a museum of pharmacy, pharmacy mm -hmm. museum, <clears throat> and it has some of Hahnemann's uh, original homeopathy. Just it's just a little little dish of some of the little yeah. things in there. And she took us on a tour of that. I was, that was a brilliant place. Um, Mark took a zillion and a half photos. Of, uh, <laughs> he loves anything that's um, lab glass and pharmacy stuff and poison bottles. And, and he had so much fun. Uh, Heidelberg, right? Yeah, Heidelberg. Uh, that's where it was. That was a beautiful place. There, I had so much fun in Europe just going through and on tour and the different people we met and the places I saw. It, it's, a, it's an amazing place. I, I I was incredibly thrilled to go. Germany was great, but <clears throat> you don't have very good Wi-Fi over there. <laughs> At least not everywhere I was. Oh yeah. <clears throat> What's it's the like... thing about you guys not having credit cards? Yeah, I mean, what? It's, it's what is what everybody now? says? I'm nuts when I talk about that. But no, we didn't have cash <laughs> or a debit card from from Germany somewhere. We couldn't use our Visa, <laughs> our MasterCard, nothing. It was like I couldn't buy souvenirs hardly anywhere because I didn't have yeah. cash. 
Yeah, it's like it is getting a bit better now because everybody like because of COVID, they're like, oh, we don't want to touch your money, so. <laughs> so Bird, no they, problem. Yeah, but it's 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 a bit sad that it takes a global pandemic for them to actually think about it. So, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Um, and like it it it's like it went it got to a point where like I'm I'm very bad with carrying money around like cash. I'm just yeah, like too. very bad in that regard. And <laughs> it usually was the case that whenever I went into town, I first had to go to a bank to grab cash and then go shopping. <laughs> Because it was like, oh, yeah, so but I'm annoying. not kidding you guys. It's just you go into a, uh, just a regular store and you say, I'd like to buy those things. And if you don't have the right credit cards, not a Visa, not a MasterCard, not an American Express, not a <laughs> nothing. Now, if you go to a, a main hotel or, or a fancy restaurant, they'll take those. But not like just some shop somewhere else. Yeah. Really surprised to find that out. Or, I guess or they will tell you, debt. <laughs> <laughs> or they will tell you that, uh, like, you can pay by card here, but you have to have this amount of money first. So, like, um, you have to pay at least, um, or like, your your um, groceries or whatever you have um, has to amount to about thirty euro or something like that, and then you can pay by card. <laughs> well, actually, that happens in America too, in some places, especially the really small shops. They want you to spend a certain amount of money because there's a fee on on yeah. the credit card to be able to use the credit card. But still, it's um just was odd, you know. Yeah, and here it was pretty much like uh, not only the the small shops. It was it was pretty much everywhere but as i've as, as i said it's it changed a bit with covid so yeah i was getting surprised. <laughs> i know that i'm carrying less unless I, I i don't use cash very often so i just don't like cash it's just like well i know it's all dirty and you have to take it you know, well let me count this out and stuff like that but yeah it's also you're right. just not handy it's like <laughs> well, yeah. i just don't just like swipe a card and yeah make sure you have enough with you <laughs> yeah it's so annoying like i had this uh thing when i i had to actually put gas in my car uh -huh. and the gas station didn't take card <laughs> and i only had like 15 euros and i was like okay i'll just put something in and then drive with that like with that gas to a bank and get more money <laughs> then take the next gas station again <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid <laughs> no, it's not stupid at all. I know exactly what you mean. Uh, well, it, and the Wi-Fi like was 1950s. not good. It's just like... <laughs> kind of. The, the Wi-Fi was just... Everywhere we went, we just had so much trouble with Wi-Fi. Now I know how yeah. to travel better. I'm a much better traveler now. I'm, <laughs> I'm much more savvy about getting a little SIM card, sticking it in the card. I got that. But boy, the best Wi-Fi we found, <clears throat> I found when I was traveling, was in Sofia in Bulgaria. They had the yeah. best. I was like... Oh, this rocks. I love this. Everywhere I went, I got my laptop open. Yeah. I'm on the internet right away. But <laughs> well, most of Europe is actually um, actually before Germany in that regard. So Germany is so slow and also like the internet connection is so bad. And especially the mobile phone um, connection. Mm -hmm. It's just like I literally had better connection in the Australian outback than here. <laughs> <laughs> So it's that close 5G? to a major is city. Is that 5G over there? 5G? Yeah, yeah. Is it cause like a right pandemic now? over there like it did over here? <laughs> yeah. I'm well, joking. and right now, it's like, let me, let me just check my phone. I'm, I've got like, well, I've got 4G right now, but um, usually I also have just Edge here. So, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty much at the center of, of our little town, which is, 20 kilometers from Cologne so <laughs> it's um it's so ridiculous in at my school I even don't have any connection so like I don't even have phone connection what <laughs> yeah if I would have to call an ambulance I would actually have to leave the the school building and run up a hill and then I could call an ambulance this is how bad it is <laughs> that's uh, not okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not okay. So do you just do you just uh, do you have a child every day that so you tell them, okay, today's your turn. If there's an ambulance needed, you are the designated <laughs> runner. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, unless you are the person in the <laughs> ambulance, then we're in trouble. <laughs> exactly. You I mean, the other one. you're in case. We have Next. we have a landline with the secretary, so we could also let them run to the secretaries, which would be, I think, procedure anyways. <laughs> But it's still like a bit, it'd be a bit, bit weird to just uh, like you arrive at school and yeah, pretty much have to tell your husband like I'll be gone for the next six hours if there's an emergency. Yeah, I can't hear it. Switchboard or send smoke signals up or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. pretty much. So tell me, so tell me about the um, the pseudoscience over there in uh, Germany. It's we from America look at Germany and say, at least I do. Wow, those people got it together. I mean, look at their leader is so <laughs> awesome. Please let her run America right now just for the moment <laughs> until we get somebody better in. But we think, you know, you guys got it together. You had a pretty good handle on COVID. Um, you know, it seems like it seems like something that America could aspire to. I'm sure people are going to say no, but in some people. <laughs> but I, I, I thought it was pretty uh, a pretty well-run country, and, except for the Wi-Fi and the <laughs> use your credit card anywhere well yeah i think um it, it's just like always on a on a spectrum in a way so it's just like of course we're doing better than the u.s with covid for example mm. but uh Everybody if you, for example almost... look, then you're just like wow they have been so smart with um like creating this level system and um like they had four cases and they were like, let's go back to level whatever that was four or two. Or I don't remember, but they just like they at the beginning, they created this level, like this tier system where they were like, OK, um, this level means you're all in lockdown. This level means we have these and these restrictions, but it's um, better than level the first level. Then the next level, a bit more freedom, next level, more freedom and so on. So it's just like like this a bit <laughs> and like that four cases and then they could say okay the whole state of whatever that was goes back to level two and everybody knew what to do it's just so smart um whereas here in germany we're like we're not a huge country <laughs> but still mm -hmm. it's it's decided on a um on a federal level so it's decided by the by the um, federal countries and that can be so different um, for like, for example, with, with school, like, um, my federal country, they decided to open schools normally, but we all have to wear masks and, um, other schools decided to open normally, but not wear masks or not open schools. So it's just like so different. And if you imagine that you have like 16 different, um, decision makers in there, then it can just lead to a lot of trouble uh, trouble because it's not like people wouldn't travel <laughs> in between uh the... yeah but but like i think as, um, I, as i said it's like we we're doing better than some and worse than some <laughs> so is it is it um if you were to go to the store in your small town you're in right now would you be wearing a mask or not a mask yeah, i would wear a mask you would be wearing a mask and would you see people around you wearing masks um, most, yeah. So um, it's like they, they ha in the shops we usually have to, and they will usually tell you that if like if you don't not wear a mask, then they would tell you. Um, but there are always these people who wear their mask like this. Oh yeah, <laughs> under the nose. Yeah, which is like so stupid. Like this side already makes me angry if I see a nose peeking <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually created a gesture for, like that for school. Because uh, like they, the the kids don't do it on purpose, but they sometimes have like the faces are a bit smaller, and the masks are usually tailored for adults, so it just slips down. And then I just do this, and then they know okay. <laughs> Universal <laughs> gesture. <it> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like such a pandemic gesture. It used to be drink. Now it's like okay, pushing yeah. mask up over your nose. <laughs> and so um, it's been pretty good over there. Do the, do you still have do you have a, I mean, are people like anti-mask people there? And uh, do you see a lot of that or is mm. like here in America? There are a lot of that, but like, I don't know if it's like actually a lot or if it just gets reported on a lot. So 
um, they were huge, like anti, anti, uh, Corona and anti, um, um, rules, uh, <laughs> demonstrations where they're all like, we're not wearing masks and, and, uh, Bill Gates just wants to chip us all. <laughs> and, yeah. Like they're, they're all together. Like, it's, um, some of them are just afraid, but some of them are also like very, very, um, deeply believing in conspiracy uh, myths and theories. So it's, it's a bit troubling, <laughs> but like, um, I can't really tell you what, what the actual proportion of the, of the um, population is in that regard. I don't think it's, I don't think it's like more than 10% or so, but even 10% is already massive. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. This is kind of hard to tell because the media sensationalizes and tells yeah. the stories about, the people who are making a fuss and not the people yeah. who are just going back, going about daily life with the mask on or. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, we, 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 like we do have some who, who don't care at all, who also don't keep their distance, um, who went on holidays to wherever, where, like if they could, <laughs> um, which is of course also not something you would, like you would do in a global pandemic to be like oh yeah now we're going to this island and then to this island and then we go to <laughs> there <laughs> just like yeah like i i also love traveling but i wouldn't do it in a global pandemic <laughs> right i mean we're not allowed americans nobody wants americans around they're all oh, yeah. for money they're like send the money <laughs> but don't come yourselves but it's no a bit americans. like reverse of like everybody wanted to go like um Everybody wants to go to America and now it's like the opposite. Like you can't go anywhere and nobody wants to go to America either. I don't blame them. Not, not yeah. one bit. We are priors. We've embarrassed ourselves. It's been awful. It's yeah. Awful. And it, it's, it's so sad. Like what, what was that? Eight, uh, 300,000 deaths now in the U S uh, no, 178 or so, but 178,000. Yeah. Yeah. But we know it's going to be, it's far yeah. bigger than that. It's just that people aren't counted because just now, Susan, it's, it's just different. because you're testing. It's not, it's, it's just a test. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> it's so embarrassing, Annika. I remember going uh, to New Zealand right after the election, whenever we elected, well, people elected Donald Trump. And I was just walking around going, I'm so, I'm so embarrassed. And people would go, yeah, you should be embarrassed. <laughs> pretty bad like i'm not i'm not one of those people I'm not yeah, I it's just like for him. i couldn't believe it like i always um i i always thought like yeah well he can he can be a candidate but nobody will actually vote for this goofball yeah <laughs> and they did yeah, and i was did. just like when i when i opened my my app in the morning and then like donald trump is the new president i was like no no <laughs> That has to be like, is it first of April? And it's like, yeah, no. <laughs> well, you know, it was, it was a perfect storm for him in a lot of ways. And I guess you're right. You know, people were like sick of politicians because I think a lot of people don't really pay attention to politics. I'm one of those unusual people and I hang around with a lot of people who pay a lot of attention. My kids and I are really paying attention to this, but we've had for years. But I think most people said, oh, he's a businessman, you know, maybe he can help us out and you know we to be honest with you i'm in california that's a long ways from new york city i didn't know much about him i really didn't i didn't watch the yeah. show that he, he ran the reality show i i people who live in the east coast especially in the new york area they say we knew all about him we knew him really well and what a joke he was but i didn't know i don't know yeah. about celebrity culture or anything like that well in Germany, actually, people thought that California might do a, a like a Brexit, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because like California is usually, if I remember correctly, California is a bit more progressive than some oh, other yeah. states. Mm -hmm. We're one of the so most progressive like, states. We're the sixth largest economy in the world, I think. Yeah, our exactly. State, yeah, just yeah. our state, and we're so yeah. large. We have so, we have oil, we have nuclear, we have we have where I live in Salinas, we're the like one of the salad bowls of the world. We grow everything just about here. Yeah. Right. So but, they could totally do a, like a Calexit or right. whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I wouldn't agree to that either, but yeah. Uh, it would but, be hot, of course. And then we take Oregon and we take Washington with us and we take, you know, 
Some and then you actually it. just the United States again, just without yeah. Donald Trump. Yeah. No, <laughs> so that, that's that what it took to get him out. <laughs> but it, but it, it has been talked about many times doing a Brexit. Oh my gosh, what's going on over there with that? It's it's a done deal, right? It, yeah, they did that in uh, the first of January. So well, we didn't really notice it because we had a pandemic that came right yeah. afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And nobody notices the difference yet, right? Yeah, like the only yeah. thing that's different is that I know that like if I want to, um, like I did a lot of traveling to, to the UK in my um, university time because I had to spend time abroad for my English degree and oh, yeah. uh, I, because I had to afford it like on my own. I was like, yeah, duh, I'm going to the cheapest country, of course, like the way with the country with it, that is like the cheapest to get there. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I did a lot of that. And I know that if I want to go back, I will have to get a visa now. And I didn't need to do that uh, before because I was a U EU citizen and they were EU. <laughs> so, uh, but apart from that, like, uh, we don't really hear much. It's, uh, they have Pandemic COVID too. Kind of so. stolen all of the fire. Now you'll be able to go, you can go into, um, Ireland, right? Yeah. Yeah without a problem and maybe scotland well if they do a uh skexist or whatever you want to call it then yeah maybe, maybe. well they are the same situation as california actually because they have a huge economy mm -hmm. and they like um they sometimes like to call themselves like the first british colony anyways like they they were their own country for a long time yeah so they would have reasons to do it, but they, of course, also have reasons not to do it. So it's a it's a difficult thing. <laughs> yeah, I I adored Scotland. I adored Wales. That was so yeah. wonderful. I went there, and then of course, I, I actually really enjoy England a lot too. The you know London, yeah, definitely. Portsmouth. I was just talking about Portsmouth. What a beautiful place that was. Um, yeah, just. York oh man it's beautiful over there and it, one of the nice things about going to New Zealand was so much that it was a lot of ways it was a lot of like England <laughs> just different weather <laughs> yes I, I don't know I, I, I really enjoyed traveling I haven't traveled much until I've seen yeah way it's old. always like My now thing. you're just saying like oh yeah we do that post corona oh yeah I remember when we did that uh, pre corona <laughs> it's just like I think I'm I think I'm fantasizing a lot about traveling now because I can't yeah I cannot, and you know, it's there's so many things that have been canceled. I was supposed to be in Italy last March, and I was looking forward to going to Pompeii. I've never yeah. been there. I'm really, you know, so I don't know. I'm getting through. <clears throat> I'm getting through by getting everything done. I'm telling myself all those things I've always wanted to do. I'm going to do them that I could do at home. I'm going to do now. So yeah because then you have over, time to I'm travel to yeah. Go, yeah and i haven't been reading as much as i thought i have billions of books well i don't have billions i have a little over <laughs> books but i'm not getting to them because i'm getting other things happening yeah so. yeah well it was it was so funny because like i um i was pretty much in lockdown for five months be mm -hmm. because they added the summer holidays to that um and I thought, like, I will read so much. I will write so many articles. I'll do so, so, so much. Well, I didn't do anything. It's just like, <laughs> I think I, it's just like, just get, because. You get interrupted. Well, I've been trying to do more exercise. So I've been trying to get up and go and exercise in the morning and then in the afternoon. And so that kind of interrupts my day. <laughs> yeah. You kind of get yourself. And I think to myself, oh, well, I'll shower after I exercise. Okay, well, maybe I'll go work in the yard because I don't want to shower. I'll go work in the yard. So I'll go work in the yard. And then I'm like, well, it's almost time for me to go and, and yeah. uh, my next exercise. So maybe I shouldn't. So I, I'm not getting myself <laughs> to a point where I'm getting all those things done. But, you know, it is better. You know, I want to talk about GSOW a little bit more because sure. that's where mm -hmm. you first started your involvement in the, um, well, we started by listening to the podcast european skeptic podcast which you are now a co-host of which is so yeah. cool <laughs> so cool cool um i was just saying i felt like now i'm listening to the show i miss jelena but um, yeah. you are such a wonderful addition to the podcast it's great to have you on there you do seem like you found your voice a little bit you seem more comfortable with uh, pontus and andras and and brian ego ego 
Ego? Ego. Ego. Yeah. You seem <laughs> like more ego, I don't know, but ego. <laughs> <laughs> ego. You just feel more comfortable on the show. And yeah, uh, definitely. it's nice to hear you on there. It's, it's great to hear your voice. Um, they're treating you well, right? I hope because other, I have an in and I will. I will. <laughs> they are. They're being wonderful. They're really cool. <laughs> they're, very, they're very good guys. I mean, I yeah, really appreciate them and the, and the work yeah. that they do and all the things that they've done. And um, I just was on a panel with Pontus recently with uh, yeah, Steve he Fidella talked about and Jessica that. Singer. Yeah, he was very proud and happy. <laughs> Is that the newest show? Oh, the show that's just coming out now. I haven't caught up uh, to that. I think the last one, like before that, 236, the one, the interview Ooh. episode. Oh, I haven't yeah. heard that one yet. Or have I? No, I haven't heard that one. I'm up to, I thought I was current. Gosh, what are you guys doing? What's going on with these shows? They're coming out every week. <laughs> well, I mean, my gosh, show. I can't keep up. I don't have, a, I don't have, I don't have. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm on uh, 236 is the next to go. And I have yeah. not listened to it yet. Austrian yeah, that's the interview busters. one. <laughs> Martin, Martin, Martin Molder, Motor, Martin. Martin Moda, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I, uh, molecular biologist. So I haven't heard that one yet. That's my next one to go. So and that's where he's talked about that. Yes, where he's like fangirling. <laughs> about the... and fangirling? Oh, fanboying maybe, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was very, he was very happy and proud to be, to be in the panel. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, he was, he was great. It was great to have him on. We uh, made him take his screen off the back because he had some kind of fake background. <laughs> yeah. so every time he'd move, you could feel him going in and out of the fake yeah. background. So we said, get rid of that. So we could see behind him. He has, he has a um, guitar. I didn't know he played guitar. And yeah. Well, uh, I actually tried this this background thingy too, but my camera is not good enough. So it usually also then fills in my eyes because it can, can't tell a difference between the white of the wall and the white of my eyes. <laughs> it looks so weird. <laughs> yeah, that would probably be kind of creepy. Um, yeah. Okay, going back to GSOW, which I yes. keep trying to go back to, but I'm, I'm getting myself off track because one of the things I want to talk about is you've written three pages for GSOW. Yeah, all, like, Don't laugh, that's fine. <laughs> That's three pages more than anybody else has. Um, <laughs> and um, I will totally butcher their names if I say them, but you've done Anna at home and Lydia. Mm -hmm. And those three pages, one uh, home you did in um, German. The yeah. other two you wrote them in English. And these are three people that are really interesting. And the pages together, you've written three and they're already at, oh, they're, there are moments just like a, a day away from hitting 26,000 page views. Wow. That's so cool. Really I have to cool. say, I didn't, um, I didn't start Lydia's page, but I significantly changed it so much that like, I think like I've got this little gadget that tells you like how much, how many person, um, like how mm -hmm. much percent <laughs> you, um, of the, of the page you wrote. And it was like significant. It was like, 80 something percent and that's why i said like i pretty much wrote this page i just didn't start it <laughs> yeah it's 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 been now we keep track the gsow project keeps track of how many times a page has been viewed because we're trying to track how successful or or just track our, our how we we're trying to monitor we're trying to see how much improvement we've had or or something we, we're trying to keep stats and so you created that Wikipedia page February 15th, 2019. That's when you stepped in and rewrote it. And since then, it's received 12,018 views. So can you tell us just briefly about these three pages? Tell us first about Lydia. Mm -hmm. So is Lydia is a um, forensic uh, psychologist and skeptic. And she's a lot more things but i can't remember all of it is but she she's, somewhere um she was born in poland but she uh now lives in cologne and uh, she's also part of the cologne skeptics <laughs> and uh yeah she's she's super smart and she's um she wrote heaps of books i think she's on the fourth right now um about psychopaths, uh, female psychopaths, sadism. Um, I think the next one will be about frauds, and uh, like the, she she'll write about like the uh, 
psychological things that are behind that and um for example like she also does these talks very popular talks um popular science um talks in like having huge audiences <laughs> all around germany and um switzerland um and austria where she then like um she will explain like what the difference is between like um uh, like sadism that is uh, like that both agree to and the one that actually um is done by psychopaths <laughs> <laughs> so like there, there's a huge difference there and she will explain that and then um yeah and then like she's she's a very interesting person and she writes in english or german? she writes mostly in german that okay and so the wikipedia page you wrote was english yeah you rewrote is in english yeah. And that's cool that she's already had 12,000 views on her yeah. English page if she is a German writer. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, exactly. But I, I think it's probably because like she's around a lot. She, she's probably one of a few German skeptics that is known outside <laughs> of the skeptical bubble. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably name about like maybe seven to ten skeptics who are really like well known outside of the skeptical sphere and she's one of them and um like she's she's been doing stuff with um like bigger tv networks in in germany and so she's um yeah she sees somebody who like she walks around the city the streets then she will get recognized oh okay yeah it's on tv <laughs> that the people would recognize it. now tell us about home now I met him, very interesting guy. Yeah. Uh, we, we met him at the conference in Poland and then Mark Edward and I went and had coffee with him and yeah. um, some other people, really interesting guy. You wrote the Wikipedia page in May of 2018 and you wrote it in German and yeah. it has had 12,697 page views since you wrote it. Tell everybody about him. I see his name pop up in the skeptic world quite a bit, but that's a lot in German. Just yeah, age German numbers, yeah. He is um, a physicist. I, I always have to say like what was was a physician and what a, phys a physicist, but he's a physicist, <laughs> so he's not a doctor, a medical doctor. Um, he's um, mostly like in the skeptical scene. He's mostly active about um, conspiracy um, theories, but he's not, he also says that we shouldn't actually name it conspiracy theory. Um, he says we should actually uh, name it conspiracy myth because a theory is either something that, okay, oh, I've got a theory about that, or it's something that's definitely proven, like the, the uh, theory of evolution. So he said, like, the word is actually already misleading. <laughs> so that's um, why he um, is advocating f to yeah, use the word conspiracy myth. And um, he... It's also like debunking a lot of stuff. He wrote um, books already, I think two or three. Um, he has a very good um, blog that's called Quantenquark. <laughs> it's about quantum um, quarks. What, what would that? Uh, like that quark. It's uh, pretty much like a cream cheese. Um, <laughs> that's <laughs> like what? Uh, it's just a pun. Like quant, quanten are like the qu quantum, um, and quark is like. Yeah, cheese. But you can also say like, if it's something is rubbish, you can also say, well, "What is that for?" And quark, like, what's that for? Kind of quark. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, he has this blog where he also um, writes stuff about like why um, this and that thing can't work, like why dowsing can't work, why that can't work, why um, the moon landing was real, <laughs> why nine eleven was real. Um, he debunks these conspiracy myths. Um, also explains why people do that, why people fall into this trap so easily. Um, and he's, yeah, he's, he's being very active in the skeptical. Yeah, I keep um, hearing him scene, in different definitely. places, names mentioned here or there. Yeah. Oh, oh, I know that person. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. And the he's last like, he was, Oh, go ahead. Uh, he was also in, um, like he was in, in Rochlaw, as, as you already mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, but he also already, like I saw him at the Cologne Skeptics doing a talk. And he also was um, the first one of um, the German skeptics who actually did an online skeptics in the pub of Cologne <laughs> with us. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he did that quite recently. It should already be on YouTube. Um, 
Uh, it's of course in German, but whoever wants to talk uh, to to check it out can. <laughs> Maybe and you, uh, yeah, uh, you uh, asked for in English now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you asked for Anna Zagrison, right? Yeah. The third one. Uh huh. And she is a page. This is a page that you wrote in English, February. Oh, February 2020. So this is a brand new page. Yeah. And it's only received 1,281 pages, but that's in English. Yeah. And I assume she would be much more known in Germany. Yeah. Tell us more. Tell us more about Anna. So Anna is also, um, is is a Say her Swedish. last name again. Uh, Zakrison. <laughs> and that's Z A K R I S S O N. Yeah. <laughs> um, she is a Swedish scientist, but she lives in Germany in Berlin. Um, and she is. Um, I met her at the Skepcon in Cologne in 2018 pretty much had her page written uh <laughs> in like july 18 and then uh did the typical thing of like being too perfectionist to actually publish it so that's why it only got published in february 2020 <laughs> i didn't change that much after all um <laughs> like where where was that page that you were writing annika <laughs> it wasn't my sandbox yeah the whole time <laughs> i was like i'll oh, change this i changed this <laughs> Yeah, changed a few, uh, um, um, yeah, dots and commas and <laughs> and things and sentences and then yeah, I just published it because I was like, well, if I if I fuzz more about it, it would would never get published. <laughs> Tell us a little um, bit more about her. Yeah, she's um, a Swedish scientist. Um, really interesting. She um, also does a lot of debunking. She has a um facebook page that is pretty successful it's called um dr anna's imaginarium mm -hmm. and it's in english so <laughs> it's not in german <laughs> and where she um publishes funny science memes but also um does some um yeah science communication she has her own company i think that if i remember correctly it is about like um green roofs so like how to like it's it, it sounded like a startup to me but i would have to do more re research to just doing there mm -hmm. um and uh, yeah she also has a podcast um also called dr anna's imaginarium but the podcast is not super well known is and it in is it in swedish it should be in english too so she's mostly active in, in english um, which is quite funny because like I got to know her speaking German at the German Skeptical Conference, but she's mostly active in English actually. Yeah. Like she's she's one of those European level activist, mm -hmm. <laughs> activists activists who are, to watch. Yeah, active in English. It's really, you know, for people out there who don't really know a lot about the Wikipedia project that, that we're in, one of the things when you especially when you write a Wikipedia page, you kind of fall in love with it a little bit. You become the resident expert on the topic yeah. it's really interesting how well you get to know the person and or topic and um i i don't know if it happened to you but it always happens to me is when i'm writing a page or i'm really engrossed in working on a page i start telling everybody around i try to find a way of <laughs> get into the conversation yeah. you know hey you know this person <laughs> writing about this like, oh, yeah, i gotta tell you about yeah. that i don't but know the best that thing that <laughs> the best thing that also happens to me is like sometimes it's like even um a bit like vice versa now where people are like huh annika writes wikipedia pages so i'll just tell her i wrote a new book and she can add it to my page <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine to some extent you know because you do well, you have a connection to the person when, yeah. when you've done that i tell them because we don't write the wikipedia page with them i mean they don't have yeah. that much influence but what will ha sometimes will happen is depending on the situation is after we've written the page, we will say, hey, here's the Wikipedia page. Can you just look over it, make sure we didn't do anything really stupid and get yeah. the dates wrong or whatever? And, and yeah. um, of course, we can't just correct things just because somebody says yeah. that the date's wrong. We have to have some kind of citation to show. Yeah. But uh, I had that for we're example okay with, on the with a little feedback from, the, from yeah. the target. We call them a target, the target of the page. <laughs> yeah. who, is, who is it that we're writing about? You know, What is that target? Because they don't own that wikipedia page it's not theirs so we try yeah. not to say 
their Wikipedia page, even though we do sometimes say that, but we say yeah. the targeted page, the, the page for that person. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's sometimes actually good to have them read over it um, because depending on like how good your sources are, they might just have a typo, for example, in there for the birthday or something like that. And then it's just very good if, and very obvious for somebody who is like the actual target of the page to be like, ah, no, I was born in March, not yeah, in February. Yeah. <laughs> it's helpful. It's helpful. I know there's a lot of flaws on my Wikipedia page and I've kind of just left them there because <laughs> I can't edit my Wikipedia page and we've got better things to do than write my Wikipedia page and correct things <laughs> on there about my birthday or whatever. I'm like, whatever, let it just, I don't really care. <laughs> and besides having flaws on my own personal Wikipedia page, just showing people that I really don't participate in. It's not a something I'm really focused on. <laughs> it's not a world leading thing <laughs> yeah i think it could be rewritten it's it's not, it's not it doesn't flow as well as it probably should i haven't looked at it recently so i don't really know but you know it's actually i think it actually is, is good and endearing if 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 you're like if your wikipedia page is not the most polished one of the pages we have <laughs> yeah i would like to see the time spent <laughs> in other areas other people with other people like, wikipedia pages yeah because I, I mean, we do call you our queen jokingly, but it's not like you're <laughs> a cult joke, leader. Joke, so. you guys. It's a joke. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Wikipedia... But you're like, you're not a cult leader. So you're <laughs> no. like, you're not the supreme that has to have the best Wikipedia page. <laughs> Bow down to me, everyone. Um, the, uh, the importance of having really strong Wikipedia pages, especially, this is important to me at least, is to, you know, the three pages you've written, as you said, they're all really interesting people who are doing a really great job, science communicators, and they're not people who we would have here in the United States and maybe other areas would have known of because yeah, they're just not, they're doing their thing, but a lot of them are doing their thing in a language other than English. And I think we should, you know, give them a shout out and give them some support and say, hey, these people are also you know, we're, we're a worldwide effort. What happens in Germany or happens in Poland, it happens in Australia, it happens yeah. in, you know, Africa is, you know, different countries in Africa. It all helps and, and, and impacts everyone. Yeah. And it's also like what we are already doing with GSOW is that we're like very good at networking, mm. but it just benefits other people also like a lot if that is also would network <laughs> um because like for example we recently had a bit of a like a re-emergence a bit of a flare up with um satanic panic again in germany oh yeah tell that story that's right you've been talking about that okay <laughs> yeah and um so we were actually like huh we know that the u.s actually did a really good job on that and like the u.s skeptics i mean and um, that they already battled it and they already got like mostly rid of it. Um, so that's why we're just like, hmm, let's reach out to American skeptics. <laughs> and there you can see like how important networking is. Um, yeah, what, what happened was that we had, um, we have these, there were some, some um, newspaper outlets or like TV outlets that actually published interviews um, but uh, like with with people who claim to be um, to have been ritually abused by a satanic sect um, or by, by the satanic sect. And um, the problem is that they didn't completely fact check it. Um, they pretty much <laughs> asked some people, but these people were like these people have an agenda anyways. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's like if you would um, ask like I don't want to have make like comparisons that make me bring me into give <laughs> like um, we're going to start tweeting bring me into Janica, trouble. <laughs> tweets at you now, Annika. You better watch out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but it's like um, if now I just I just try to say it neutrally. If you already are biased in a way, and then they ask you, does that exist or not? Then you you will have a very hard job to be still skeptical there um, because you already have your bias. And um, that's pretty much what happened. And um, it got published as like a thing that's actually is happening. And uh, <laughs> yeah, um, a lot of German skeptics were, were like, guys, didn't we already did do that in the <laughs> 70s? 
It's like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> what is old is new again. Yeah. Yeah. What is it they say when you forget your history, you have to repeat it. Yeah. A lot much. of people born <laughs> in the 1970s who are not aware of this. <gasps> wow. The satanic panic. Oh my gosh. People are putting people in cults and. <laughs> and it's just like what what Lydia Benecke or like she's one of the people who is very active in in that regard um like to to battle this um these misconceptions um because she says it's it's super harmful uh for like for especially the people who believe they have been abducted and uh abused by a satanic sect because on the one hand they don't get the therapy they actually need right like, these people are genuinely traumatized but not by a satanic sect <laughs> and yeah, like they don't get the therapy they need and they will also like be much more afraid because they will assume that they, they are like um like that everywhere they look is is the satanic sect that which doesn't exist the so they're just trying to help them is part of the sect and yeah the family members they, are part yeah. of yeah yeah and and the like it's it's, part of the it's sect, yeah. it can be very harmful for these people and um yeah and it also just like the an example she always gives is that um like if you ever wanted to for example have like celebrate a secret party for somebody like plan a secret party there will be somebody who blabs <laughs> <laughs> and she's like yeah and if you have like a global satanic cult are you really sure that like nobody actually picked that up no police ever <laughs> it's like <laughs> and and she also has examples of this like um this policeman who was like okay i'll i believe you and i'll um i'll just i'll just help you and um he actually observed the person who who said uh, they would be in this satanic like they would be abducted and um, abused by this satanic sect who was in front of her house um, or their house, I don't know if it was a girl or a boy or like man or woman. Um, and then the person called and said like, oh, I'm being abducted right now. And they're, they're leading me to a tunnel. And he knew that she didn't leave the house because he was in front of the house. <laughs> Maybe there's a tunnel inside the house. Who knows? But they, <laughs> they've already, they already saw the house before that because they knew oh. the person. So he was like, and, the, and she also described like, yeah, they're taking me to a car and they're leading me somewhere. Blah, oh, blah, in blah. a car. So he can see she's not being taken to the car. Yeah, so exactly. Like you could the see that. of the people behind yeah. them. And... and it's like, of course we, we like, of course there are things where you can't say it's like, it's absolutely 3000% sure that it doesn't exist, but it's highly, highly unlikely that a satanic cult, uh, global cult that has like um of course they also like have their hands in anything that's powerful <laughs> like well, according people. to this like the yeah people, yeah yeah exactly and yeah. that is just like uh it's i don't know if <laughs> i have to have that like... now i'm not i'm afraid now <laughs> yeah it's just not very likely you know that that uh actually can happen <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna appear on my wikipedia page that susan believes in lizard people yeah, this is a lizard person. I am a lizard people. If you watch my eyes, that's the you look just out of the corner of your eye, you can catch that. <laughs> yeah, Susan doesn't need a heater, she just sits um, on a stone in the sunlight. <laughs> that's what my garden is all about. It's like yeah. you out there and lay down on it, and I pull them out of my belly. Yeah. And that, that makes total sense in the smoke out here, the, the wildfires yeah. out here. But yeah, but, but that's pretty much why networking is so important, I would say. Absolutely. I mean, same with the, as we were talking about, uh, uh, homeopathy is not a big deal over here, but it could flow up, you know, and we'd be like, wait, wait, what homeopathy is a thing now in America. Oh, dear. Let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's determine call. <laughs> to yeah. deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's call Information Network Homeopathy. They have yeah, everything seriously. prepared for us. And having them to have strong, well-written Wikipedia pages is yeah. real important because the media is using that as a source to be able to find more information yeah. about people. Mm. And, and um, Information mm. Network Homeopathy also has like most of their website in English. So, um, Didn't we write the like, Wikipedia page? 
Um, I think that we could, I think we didn't, but we sometimes add to it. <laughs> Okay, but there is a Wikipedia page for, for them. Yes. There's a I Wikipedia think, page for a lot of the people we've mentioned that uh, are interviewed on the ES. Well, as they're interviewed on the ESP, the, Inter the European Skeptic Podcast, we can use those interviews to mm -hmm. help improve Wikipedia pages. I have actually have to correct myself. We, they only have a German page. They don't have an English page yet. In, in um, Wikipedia? Yeah. Well, as long as it's in German, for sure. <laughs> a lot of the work is in, yeah. is in German, but I guess it does need to get translated over into English. Yeah, definitely. Now I've got the hiccups all of a sudden. I've got to take some homeopathy. Yeah. Or hiccups. What would be the? Or somebody's be, thinking of you. <laughs> what would be? What would be? The, what would be the thing that would cure hiccups? <laughs> uh, it has like it has to be equal, right? It has to be the opposite of hiccups, right? Or whatever. Yeah, but it's also them. like the simile thing so sometimes they, they yeah. give you like the thing that's the same so hiccups are pretty much a spasm of the diaphragm right well that's <laughs> if they the feel like term. you actually they feel like you're actually like hiccuping like you do you're like your throat is compressing so maybe something that would compress your throat or let that would let your diaphragm spasm or how about something that would scare me so they could they could they could di dilute something scary, <laughs> like a clown, <laughs> clown or yeah something very frightening. Yeah, and then you take that and it's like that scares you out of the you go, look. They're gone. <laughs> you had to think very it hard. Did work. It did work. It did work. I'm impressed. <laughs> I think we we have to take like the a tiny piece of a clown's nose, like the squishy <laughs> nose. And then we take a bit of a balloon <laughs> because, <laughs> because on the one hand, the balloon is also something that can pop and scare you. Oh, yes. On yes. the other hand, if you blow up a balloon, then it, uh, it also works on your diaphragm, right? <laughs> Carmen, so, Carmen, Carmen's watching and she put up a picture of a scary clown on our Facebook. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the clown we will put in. <laughs> <laughs> D dilute that, Carmen. Put it, uh, succuss it and dilute it 30 times at least and how you um, have to shake it too shake it and then <laughs> i think you have to top good. a bible with it or something you're supposed to use some piece of leather and you're supposed to hit it with it and stir <laughs> it three times to the right one time to the left there's all sorts of rules like a good it. potion maker yes <laughs> yeah there's all sorts of rules for and then for dilute, dilute it again and again and again and then we'll give you the water that will cure your hiccups. <laughs> well, Janice, Janice Boyton is watching. She says her grandfather used to say you have to stand on your head and drink a glass of water to cure hiccups. I can't imagine doing that. <laughs> I don't think I can stand on my head. They, they disappeared on their own. So clown water. A friend water. said you Ew. have to... Rem <laughs> uh, yeah. A friend said you have to remember the lunch you had three days ago. And then you will have to remember so hard that your diaphragm is just like oh whatever i'm not hiccuping anymore <laughs> i'll get rid of the hiccups right away <laughs> yeah. um, well i don't know if that actually helps or if if it's just like anecdotal evidence so <laughs> so one of the things we're doing in dsow that we could we were um really need is we need more german editors well we need more editors period yeah and uh, one of the things that we started doing is we started translating the training to become a GSOW editor into other languages. I don't think we got yeah. very far, but it, <laughs> it's, it's important to me to try because each yeah. Wikipedia language, I mean, it's basically the same, but some of the rules are a little different. And we felt that if somebody is going to be editing in German, let's use that as an example, then it would be good for them to see the, the training in German and what it would look like on their computer screen because yeah we're, we specialize in training people who aren't necessarily tech people you know that are really into the tech world probably yeah. half of us are not me but half of our group is and half <laughs> yeah. of our group are just like regular people who who don't do tech for a living yeah. so they're a little intimidated by the uh, screens of wikipedia and you know and so that if they look at the computer screen image they're looking at and it's in the language that they're they're in i think it would be helpful for them to learn how to edit and at least through the beginning stage once they get a little more advanced then maybe they could pick up 
on the English better. Yeah, definitely. We need yeah, editors. We like have so few the... German editors. Yeah. It's, it's like, especially because of the, some of the commands are also like different. Um, so it's like when, when I did the training, I of course did it in English first, but then I was like, hmm, we also, of course, I want to also edit in German. <laughs> so I pretty much did my own training in German then because um, I, I could only use like half of the English training for the German Wikipedia. <laughs> Right. And that's it, yeah. why it's, it's so good to have this translated, especially because like not everybody speaks English in Germany. <laughs> well, so, we want people to read the Wikipedia page in the language they're comfortable in reading it in. Yeah. So even if they do speak English, maybe their reading and writing in German is better. And, yeah. if, and, and not only do we want to create pages in German, trans, sometimes we create them. Sometimes we translate them from one language to another. And sometimes we take the German and translate it into English. Yeah. Uh, because like uh, the people that you've been mentioning, there's people that we want to know about that are known in the world, German world, but we should probably yeah. know about in other languages. Yeah. And like uh, information network. Home, yeah. yeah, that would be very, <laughs> that would be very good to have in English. I'm sure that yeah. would be interesting so we can get more information about it because nobody likes yeah. to read the translated let me look at the german here we have written now you're gonna be embarrassed mm -hmm. you're gonna be embarrassed we've only written seven pages in german yeah and three of them are mine so. <laughs> no one of them's yours you've only written mm -hmm. one in german oh yeah right yeah. in the language of german we've yeah. only written seven and i'm trying to load that right now that is really embarrassing you guys yeah yeah come on Can you, you compare that editors. to the netherlands can you compare that to the Netherlands to put like to push the shame in? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm looking at Afrikaans where we have one editor who's writing in yeah. Afrikaans. He's written 153 pages. Yeah. <laughs> one guy, yeah. Afrikaans, yeah. In South Africa. And so um, I'm looking at German right now and we've written seven pages and those seven pages have been read 447,000 times. So that's, that's some information. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Okay, so we've written, the most popular page we've written in German is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mm. That one has been viewed 319,000 times. That's a lot. That's a yeah. lot of page times. And then the other one is, is this D W U B? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, how would you say that in German? Uh, GWP. <laughs> how would you say the full name? Gesellschaft für wissenschaftliche Untersuchung von Parawissenschaften. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> the mouthful. The Wikipedia page for DWUP, written in German, has we wrote it in 2012, and it has been viewed 90, almost 99,000 times. Yeah. So the media is probably reading about it and, uh, yeah. you know, and, and different organizations and people who need to know what this is. That's fabulous. And then Leo Igwe, we wrote his Wikipedia page. I love Leo mm -hmm. Igwe. And we wrote it in many languages, but one of the reasons why we wanted to write, write it in German is because he is living in Germany. Yeah. Right? Because mm -hmm. he had to leave uh, Africa. What country yeah. is he in? I can't remember. Oh. Uh. I'll look it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he had to leave his country because he was getting abused by um, for the work he was doing in, in the... Nigeria, I think. Nigeria. Nigeria. I well, he's from Nigeria. Yeah. He so he had left Nigeria. He's living in Germany. So we wrote his Wikipedia page in German. The mm -hmm. German Wikipedia page has been read 1,543 times. That's, that's not a lot, but it's something. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, you wrote the, was it you that wrote the PPP, PPE portrait project Wikipedia page? Was that you? I don't no, no, you didn't so. write it. No. Somebody wrote it in no. German. Oh, one of my other editors. There are other yeah. German editors. Not a lot. Well, I are. think some of them also were written by Leon, <laughs> who can speak a bit of German. Yeah, yeah. Stanislaw Brzezinski, who has the Brzezinski Clinic in mm. America, that is a cancer yeah. quack. I can say that. His Wikipedia page in German has been read almost 10,000 times. And then there's another one, Rana, R-A-N-A -A is her first name. 
and the last name is A H M A D. And I'm saying I'm pretty her, sure that's I'm not somebody sure that her. Leon would write about too. Yeah, <laughs> written five thousand times in. Mm. So when I say they've been read, we don't know if they've been read from beginning to end. We just know that it's a click. Yeah, and we've pretty much sure that it's a, a legitimate human click and we've gotten rid of a lot of the things that are bots and spiders mm. and things like that that yeah. would do that so it's as best as we can to knowing how many times a wikipedia page has been accessed it's whatever that's it, it's what we can do so yeah we do have a few other german editors i'm so sorry i have i don't have it in front of my screen right now but we do <laughs> but we've only written seven so if you're out there and you can, and you have the time to join our Wikipedia project and you, you can write in languages other than English, even though we'll take people who write in English, we would really appreciate it if you join. We take project. everybody. <laughs> yeah, we take, we haven't, we haven't started writing in Esperanto or Klingon yet, but <laughs> trying to get the other languages done first. <laughs> yeah, Any suggestions, and anything you would advise? For Klingon. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> and getting us to, to getting them to join Wikipedia. Yeah, I think our, our GSOW project. I should say. A lot of fun. I like. I mean, I mean, I have. Uh, I found friends. I like without GSOW, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Like I, uh, like I already told you that I got into like Skeptic Inquirer and writing sometimes for the Skeptica magazine and met um, a lot of the Cologne skeptics and being active in the German skeptical scene and, of course, the ESP that all wouldn't exist if I never had joined um, GSW. <laughs> so it can lead to surprising, very cool um, results. Right. <laughs> That's the one thing. Networking, the other thing like is like, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's also like, if you, if you don't want to be somebody who is like super active or like who's in the limelight or whatever, you, then you don't have to. Like the, the perfect thing about GSW is like you do what you want. And if you're like somebody who only writes, then that's fine. And there will be people who take photos and who do audio recordings and everything. But you can also just be like you're doing one of the most important skeptical um, activist work that there can be. Um, and you can do it from your computer. So it's, it's so good. At your own so time. Important. Yeah. Yeah. At home. Yeah, um, exactly. I, I meant to mention Skeptical Inquirer. So this is the, this is the print magazine that just came mm -hmm. out yesterday. And I haven't, I haven't, obviously I haven't gotten to it yet, but this is the, the print uh, version of um, Skeptical Inquirer. And you've been writing for the online yeah. version. You've written a, how many articles? Mostly interviews, right? Mostly interviews. I look it up, but I haven't been super active this year. <laughs> I have to say. You've been busy. But you've been writing interviews. You wrote an uh, article about the conference, Skept mm -hmm. Skepticon. Yeah. Skepticon, and attending yeah. that. And we're able to use those articles that you write because mm -hmm. Skeptical Inquirer is considered a reliable source. So we can take the articles that you've written and we can use them on the Wikipedia page for the people that you interview yeah. or the conference you attended or whatever. And, and it's, it's like a psycho, psycho, psycho cycle <laughs> where, you know, everybody's doing their yeah. part. And if we all work together, we can kind of get this better, mm. better, we can, we can improve society. Do you yeah. have that numbers in front of you? Um, I did one, two, three, four, five, uh, six interviews and, um, three reports. Yeah. Who did, who did you interview? Um, for example, oh no, it, that wasn't, a, it was a four reports. Sorry. Um, I did, uh, I interviewed Anna Zakrison, <laughs> the one I wrote, also wrote the Wikipedia page for, but I wrote the Wikipedia page before I did the interview just to, um, clarify that, that I didn't have a conflict of interest at that point. <laughs> um, so, uh, shall I also explain conflict of interest? If you'd like. Um, yeah. Okay. That's something that, uh, like you pretty much for example, if you wrote an article, then you shouldn't be the one to put it into the Wikipedia page because it's just, it's a bit, it's just a bit weird. 
um, on the one hand. And on the other hand, it can um, lead to others thinking that you're just like you, that you were nepo like that you're doing nepotism and stuff. It's like, it seems weird. Um, not a good tone, so to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then I interviewed Natalie Grams, Information Network Homeopathy. <laughs> Um, I interviewed the organizer of the ESC in um, Belgium, like the one that happened last year. Mm -hmm. uh, What's that? The because... European Skeptic Congress. Which yeah. Is I went yeah. to in Poland and I am dying yeah. to go to again. Yeah, I want to go there too, like again, but to, it was like last one, I just couldn't go because that happened Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And if it's not on a holiday, um, in Germany, teachers can't take days off. <laughs> so this and, is a Congress that is done in Europe and it floats from yes. place to place. It's run by the European Skeptical Council of Organizations, organization, yeah. something like that. Yeah, we've written yeah. the Wikipedia page mm -hmm. and it's actually been written in every language that they represent. So it could be mm -hmm. like, like six or seven different countries that it could be. Yeah. And it's run European by the Council Claire of Skeptical Organizations. <laughs> yeah, we've written that. So they have a conference yeah. that floats every two years. And the pandemic hit, hit this year. So actually, this is the year they wouldn't be having a yeah. conference. Do you know if they've announced where or when the next one will be? Not really. Like, I didn't hear anything yet. So it was in I think Poland the year I was there. That was 2017. Yeah, and it was and in. There was one in nineteen. In in uh, Belgium. Yeah. In two thousand nineteen. Yeah. And so it may go to. Maybe Germany. That would be cool because then I would just go for a day. <laughs> yeah, it could be Germany or could be. Yeah. Um, Poland. It usually, it, Poland. It's usually a group that's got a active skeptic group because yeah. that is usually who hosts it mostly. And yeah. The Czech Cologne skeptics. would be really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the Czech skeptics and the Polish skeptics are the ones that ran the conference I was at, which was mm. phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. And then the, you know, we haven't had a France, a French one, have we? Yeah, no, I don't, like, there probably was one, but I can't remember one, so it has to be a bit longer ago. <laughs> I think the Netherlands skeptics, skeptics in uh in Netherlands, probably would be another candidate that would yeah. be it soon. That would be cool too. All places like, I'd like to go, so hopefully they'll invite me to be a speaker, so I can yeah. <laughs> yes. So if you, I'll bring that. an entourage <laughs> of people with me. Hopefully, so we'll all go have a reason to go and go do a tour and then tour <laughs> over there again. I absolutely adored it. It was so much fun to travel and to see. Yeah. I'm really got that travel on my head right now because again, yeah, it's because we're talking anywhere. internationally. I have yeah. that. Uh, you know, I'm American passport and I'm, you can't get much more American than my accent. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> I can't even pretend I'm Canadian. <laughs> Nobody's going to let me in anywhere. But like most Germans won't recognize accents, actually. They'll be like, they can recognize that you're speaking English well, that you're not do having a German <laughs> accent. <laughs> I barely speak English. <laughs> That's what my kids say. They say Mom, no, but they will, they will no. be like, Oh, are you from America? No, I'm from Australia. Oh, you from America? No, I'm from Ireland. Like they can't hear the <laughs> <laughs> Like most can't. <laughs> well, I think I'd give it away because I don't know anything so, about no it. Worries. No, no worries. Just your Kiwi. I can sneak in. People won't be too afraid of American. You Never can just be, all, no, no, I'm actually from New Zealand, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I keep telling people I'm going back to New Zealand if, if Trump is elected president again. The next four years I'm spending in New Zealand. I'm trying, oh, to, yeah. get, I'm trying to get people to sponsor me, and, and, uh, and then I want to come back because I want I, I love my yeah. house here, but I, I want to go back and to uh, yeah. live somewhere else for a few years. <laughs> I don't yeah. think I can another four years. <laughs> is there, if um, anybody out there on Facebook is interested in asking a question to Annika or anything German related or anything like that, please let me know now because I'm about to sum up the comp the conference. Sum up <laughs> but the maybe I should still <gasps> mention who else I interviewed. <laughs> yes, yes, please go ahead. Um, people are I did uh, Pixie Turner, who is a nutritionist. Oh, she's so interesting. She's so good. 
Uh, I did Alice Haworth or Haworth. I can't. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. But she's also really cool. She's a medical researcher um, with um, like she she researches cancer, and she's super smart and super interesting. She's on a and podcast, she's also right? Yeah, she has skeptics with a K. Skeptics with a K. Yeah. Um, then I did like I reported on Skepcon nine. Yeah, that was Skepcon nineteen. Mm-hmm. Then. Skepcon, the dates are a bit messed up here. Oh, no, no, that was the legal case against homeopathy critic. That was when Natalie Grams actually got sued for saying homeopathy doesn't work beyond the placebo effect. <laughs> uh, then I did a report on Augsburg, like on the Skepcon in 2019. Um, a report on the ESC in Belgium. And then I did an interview with Udo Endrescheid, who's a very active member of the Information Network Homeopathy. So that's something we could use on the English uh, Wikipedia page. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can get that put over there. I think you know this. I think you know some people who might be able to help you there. It's <laughs> already over there. Yeah. Oh, if only I had a global network. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> then maybe you could ask, and maybe you might even be listening now that it needs to be done. <laughs> so yeah, so so this is an important outlet, you guys. Um, writing for Skeptical Inquirer in the print magazine or on the um, website as Annika and actually I do as well. That is really important part of the ecosystem of, of skepticism because people I, I personally believe are not likely to change their minds whenever people are yelling at them and making fun of them and things they they yeah. have to kind of say i keep saying this and hopefully someday somebody will quote me on it well somebody somewhere will say according to susan gerbig people need to <laughs> save face it's very important that they that they are able to um yeah, I guess I can't eloquently say it. That's why nobody's quoting me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that people need to be able to find the information themselves and to change their mind and be able to say, I did my research and I no longer think that homeopathy works in this case or at all. Or yeah. and, and if they come to that conclusion themselves, even if you've sort of led them to it and helped them to find the, the information on it, I think that we will have people will be more likely to change their mind. And I'm not so sure we can change a lot of minds that have been entrenched, but I do believe there's a lot of people out there who don't know a lot about something and are at the beginning stages of learning about it. And if you catch them early enough on, then they won't go down that path and maybe inoculate I'm using this word inoculating a lot. (laughs) If you inoculate them early about how to think critically and maybe about a subject like Bigfoot or Loch Ness Monster or crystal healing, that if they kind of understand where, what that is and how, how we logically don't make good connections and we see things where they aren't, then maybe that they will use those same techniques they've learned and that same logic and that same string of consciousness just when it gets to things like homeopathy or COVID or, you know, wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, maybe they will, they'll go helping them in some area that you think maybe isn't harmful, like flat earth or Bigfoot will benefit them later in an area that will have, more consequences to their health and to health of other people around them and then they will go to a doctor if they have like an infected uh insect bite and not put some herbs on it so (laughs) yeah herbs or something like that yeah but um okay so i think that unless there's something else that's really important that we got to get out there i'm just happy that you spent a couple it's been a couple hours it goes fast huh yeah it does like it it's always it always goes fast if you like actually enjoying yourself and <laughs> <laughs> so they say so i've heard i don't know if that's if it's been scientifically tested or not but I just, i'm really really grateful that you were to take some time with me today and because i know you're super busy with with school and um 
you know, teaching and, and all the yeah, other but things. Yeah, right now, like the, the podcast every week. Awesome. But those yeah. guys, uh, on so Rash cool. and Pontus. <laughs> I still remember seeing them the first time in in um in Poland at the conference, and I actually went up to them. And was like, "Excuse me, are you my heroes from the European Skeptics Podcast?" And they were like, "Oh, that's cute." <laughs> and I sat behind them like a true fangirl would. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, Troy David Roy says, it strikes me that one of the reasons the Socratic method works as well as it does seems to be the nature of the questions asked, letting people come to things on their own, 100% correct. And um, I think that if we, even if we are behind the scenes a little bit pushing them a little bit yeah. like, say, towards the good information, I think that by asking people, you know, I was just thinking of this today too, if, if we were to talk to people like let's say it's about ufos if we were to say you know i find that topic really interesting also i wonder you know but nobody's really answered the question for me really well if you if people were abducting ufos i mean by ufos then how come you know and and and, yeah, and ask yeah. the question like i really want to know the answer and and just set it up like i'm interested also what mm -hmm. do you think of this how how would how would they address this question? And maybe you can have more of a conversation with them instead of being like, you are so stupid. How could you possibly believe <laughs> yeah. that? That and is so like, dumb. Because of course they're gonna they're gonna say, I'm not stupid. And yeah, if they if you insult them, they belief. will be like, Okay, if you just want to insult me, then I don't won't listen. Like, why should I listen if you're insulting me? But um, like there's this, this cute saying that I just remembered. It's um, you can lead the donkey to the well, but you can't make it drink. <laughs> and English that's like is the same. you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make yeah. it drink. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. And it's like it's, it's, it's just German. so true. Say it in German. Um, du kannst den Esel zum Brunnen führen, aber du kannst ihn nicht zum Trinken bringen. <laughs> I, I so admire people who can, who are duolingo. <laughs> it's just so to me it's just such a it's like i'm it's like having a magic skill you know this magic i, I aren't you pretty fluent in spanish well i used to be fluent in spanish i i actually yeah i i could speak spanish really well but only in the workplace <laughs> at work no problem people had some trouble even thinking that I was not a Spanish speaker on the phone. I was, I could get the accent, I, but only at work, <laughs> outside of the workplace, I was pretty dumb about <laughs> speaking Spanish. It was so Spanglishized that, that it was pretty embarrassing. And I can't read and write in Spanish very well, but um, I'm that losing it now that I'm out of, I'm out of the skeptic, I mean, out of the workplace. Yeah. 2016 is when I retired, when I was retired. And so I keep saying, I'm in the pandemic now. I have time to relearn Spanish. <laughs> and it isn't happening. <laughs> but I sure would love to. The way to learn a language is to immerse yourself in it, I think. Yeah. I had exactly that happening, actually, um, when I went to uh, England and I lived at a um, community, like in a community for three weeks. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it was so funny because like I could analyze uh, something in English. I could do this. I could do that. I had uh, all this university vocabulary. And then I was in a kitchen and I couldn't tell, like, I didn't know, like, what, what is that thing? What is that thing? I didn't know. <laughs> I just, I, I never had these words because I never needed them. And uh, like, it's just so, so that's why it's so important to immerse yourself and uh, like also in different in different um, situations things yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely like I say at work I was fine I could make appointments I could talk to your child I can ask you because I was a photographer of mainly children I could quote prices or packages you know how much something costs and and did you want your appointment in the morning you know yeah. mañana and you know it just it was all that stuff I could do and you don't even think about it, it would roll off your tongue and but if I walked out of my workplace and somebody asked me a question, just a basic question about where something was, I would freeze. I'd be like, <laughs> uh, uh, let me find somebody who can help you because I don't quite know. And I was always yeah. better at speaking than 
understanding too, which mm. is really weird. Yeah. That is amazing. It's so interesting. It's so cool. Uh, like languages yeah. are really cool. If, and if, if people have any if children ever... out there, start them now while they're little <laughs> and their brains are give them as many languages as you possibly can, even if it's only part of a language. Just <laughs> introduce them to languages. Gosh, because it's yeah. so if nice. you can speak like for example i know somebody who had like their native, native they never talked their uh, spoke their na native language with their child because they thought like their native language isn't like sought after and it's just, just like this is a oh. this is super sad and b uh, because it's like part of your identity and b um do it because like even if they will never use the language it's still beneficial for their brain and for their whole like overall language capacity so uh -huh. yeah It's, it's, just... it's really great. And, you know, um, one of our editors, we we're talking about Wyatt, who speaks, um, who's writing in um, Afrikaans. Afrikaans. Yeah. One of the things he's doing, I mean, they're not well read pages. They're, they're well written, but they're not, I mean, he's written 150 something pages, but they're, mm. they're not at 100,000 page views, which is like one German page would probably get 100,000 <laughs> yeah. page views. Mm. But one of the things he's doing is he's preserving the language because he's writing science pages. He's mm. writing pages about topics that are science. And yeah. also he's been really writing about South African um, scientists. Yeah. So we're learning. So as I'm reading these things, I'm proofreading the English ones because he's translating in English and mm. Afrikaans. And I'm reading through and I'm like, well, these are all really interesting people. And I yeah. would never have heard of them and yeah. know nothing exactly. about them. And then so putting them into Afrikaans for people who are speaking, reading, writing Afrikaans, they're like preserving their culture, preserving their language, preserving yeah. it. And if you speak Dutch, apparently you can read Afrikaans too. Yeah, I like I speak a tiny bit of Dutch and I can pretty much understand Afrikaans in writing. Really? So. <laughs> There's several words you say in German. I'm picking up. I understand in English because German and English are very similar. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's it's so interesting because a lot of languages have common roots um, where you wouldn't think they have. <laughs> so it's it's and like it's even sometimes they have like a mutual root in Latin or so. <laughs> For example, um, an example I used in school today is like. Nepotism goes um, back to nepos, which means, or like, I don't know the English, the Latin word, but goes back to the word that also means nephew. nephew. Nepotism, nephew. Oh, the German word for nephew yeah. is neffe. So it's just like, it's the same word. And it both goes oh, back to Latin. Somebody was, and that's where they got nepotism because somebody hired their yeah. nephew. Yeah. Oh. So like, because language is just so cool, actually. <laughs> Yeah, well, it goes back to your and my favorite love here is history. Yes. <laughs> and I love social history more than anything. Social history, the, the you know, when we learned about the Civil War or something in America, I wasn't so interested in the battles and what generals oh, said yeah. this. I was more interested in how did you feed the people? Yeah. How, what was, what was the impact on the people around the battle site? Mm -hmm. And how, how did you, um, recruit people for the war when you know and just that the social yeah. what was the songs like what was the food like what was yeah. the you know what was it like for a typical person you know farmer or, mm. a, or a laborer or a woman or yeah, a child definitely i i that i love that and so with yeah. the media we really are preserving the history and writing the history of the world mm. it's powerful yeah. isn't it annika Totally. And it's like, because we're also recording um, audio, um, little like audio voice bits um, for Wikipedia, we even like conserving um, like uh, speech sounds that wouldn't be there if like if the person dies, we still have their voice. Right. It's, it's that's, very that's special. a little known thing that people don't know about. We try to, we try to get a piece of audio from people, video too. We'll take the yeah. video from mm -hmm. people that we own the copyright for or somebody in our group owns the copyright mm -hmm. for because then we can upload it to wikimedia or we get somebody who owns that to upload mm -hmm. it to the wikimedia but it's nice if we do it it's better if we just do it because we'll just do it whereas you ask somebody to do it then they're like oh i'll get to it and then you know you're still chasing <laughs> around 
But what Annika is talking about is a voice project that we started years ago where we just, we go to the conferences and we get different speakers and say, can you give me two or three minutes to record on my phone some audio? And then we'll put it on the Wikipedia page so you can hear them talking in their, in their, in their own voice. Yeah. We can get them to speak in other languages. Then that's great too. You know, whatever. It's it's just so nice. It changes changes so much if you can actually hear the the um like their their voice and i also have to say like i recorded a, a german um historian and i never knew how to pronounce her first name <laughs> and i asked her like hey could you maybe like introduce yourself for the voice project and and now i will know how i always know how to pronounce her first name <laughs> hear, hear and pronounce the name and they don't even have yeah. to I mean, they could be speaking, some of them, some of the people we've created, they tell jokes. Some will say like their favorite uh, quote. Um, there's all different kinds of things that people will say. Um, some will introduce themselves to the audience. And it's just really just to create their voice and to, to, to capture what they sound like. And I think that, yeah. that that's an important part of um, knowing and preserving history and that's part of our wikipedia project not only taking pictures and creating content and um when i go to a conference i i pull out my camera i have a nicer camera and i'll, I'll videotape and even if yeah. i videotape for three minutes of part of a talk i've got three minutes of them speaking and i can take it yeah. and put that on the wikipedia page and it's just kind of cool to be able to say oh this is what they look like this is how they move this yeah. is how they sound how they think what are they like? Do they look off to the side when they're trying to think about something? Do they, you know, do they twiddle their thumbs? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> what are they you like? You'll never yeah. know what happens with these people. Like you, you never know if if they'll become the next president or if they'll die tomorrow. So it's like it's always something that's it's conserved and that will it. be there as long as there are like Wikipedia service. Right, so and, it's, it's and really having cool. that on Wikimedia Commons means that it's free to yeah. use with you know you don't have to get permissions or anything like that necessarily you can somebody else can use that audio or that video to yeah. create deep fakes and then they can <laughs> <laughs> yay <laughs> <laughs> oh well we just made it worse annika but it's important <laughs> all right you guys it's been so great to have people on facebook to kind of hang out with us it's, it's fun it's making keeping me sane er ish <laughs> going through this pandemic i really appreciate that people come and they listen i have a feeling they're doing other things in the background you know art or um you know cleaning the house or something <laughs> and they join us in conversation i know it's a long time it's two hours now but um i i think it's great to preserve just like i say this conversation with you and i just ch chatting about germany and and languages and what you're mm. doing and what's happening in you know our mentality of yeah. preserve more <laughs> history and uh let people know about what's going on in the world yeah definitely <laughs> and people are carmen says she's at work and she says that it was fun thanks and janice says <laughs> thank you and it's just so nice we're going to put this up on our <laughs> youtube channel and um yeah. please subscribe i have it down here in the, in the notes in the chat yeah, thank, Annika, you. <laughs> thank you so much for for joining us today i really appreciate it and good luck to you with um not that i believe in yet, luck or anything but <laughs> um you know i i expect wonderful more wonderful things coming out of the european skeptic podcast i'm so glad that you are um the new co-host i'm so happy great. too like i'm really happy about it <laughs> yeah i it's, you're such a fan and it's and it's a nice voice and you bring um you bring a nice mix to the to the show. I think it's it's a good it's a good fit too. And, um, I think people should check out the European Skeptic podcast and Troy says thanks to both mm -hmm. of you. Thank you, thank you, Troy, for hanging out with us. And I hope to read more of your articles on Skeptical Inquire online. And <laughs> yeah, we'll do. Able, I would appreciate that and Skeptical Inquire. <laughs> and. Uh, Again, I'll point out the, the magazine from Germany, from GW Uppe, and I'm one of their fellows, by the way. Yes. I'm yes, a fellow uh, at uh, GW Uppe, so I think that um, if you speak German, get the magazine either online or in, in um, print.
print. If you're a member of GWP, you also get all of them for free. Just saying. <laughs> if you're a member. Yeah, yeah. man. If you're a member, you don't have to pay for them. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> and as well as, let's see if we can get this German um, training at least translated so we, so yeah. if people join and they speak German and they want to edit in German, it'll be easier for them to become editors. Yes. And so we can get more than seven. Seven out there. We could be oh, pages so into German. <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> embarrassing. Yeah. We're not going to even talk about how many Dutch pages because it's probably several hundred, but yeah. <laughs> let's get the German. German's one of the top languages in Wikipedia, too. Yeah. And that's the sad thing. Like, Wikipedia is very popular in Germany. And, and then it's just like, yeah, we only have seven pages. It's seven like, pages. Uh, uh, there's so much potential English, <laughs> French and German are the top pages and there's yeah. over two million pages in in German yeah six million in in um, English and two million in French but we yeah. still have a lot to do so if you're seeing the potential and you can speak German then totally join us <laughs> even if you don't speak German join us <laughs> yeah just join us <laughs> <laughs> that would be fine we'll, we'll take anybody because you know what if you write in English then we could turn around a German editor can translate it. You've already done yes. all the work and they can translate it into German. So in, in a way you're doing a lot of help. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no matter what you can do, you will always be a great help for us. We need <laughs> photos too and audio. So check out everything. Sometimes we just need a bit of encouragement. So yeah, like if you're, yeah, yeah. whatever share you want to do, join us. <laughs> share, share our stuff so that we feel like we're, we're we're appreciated and my editors feel like doing more we appreciate yeah. that all right thank you everybody thank you annika i'll get this video thank up on you. youtube as soon as i can probably in the next couple of days bye everybody bye